Okay, first things first is we're gonna get the drum removed. Now, if you can't just pull it off, I'm gonna have to use a pry bar. I've been getting in behind here between the backsplash or some people call it a dust cover and the rotor. Um, just because I can move it a little bit means it's probably gonna come off pretty easy. The unfortunate thing with this particular setup is you can't get in behind and adjust the, um, oh, what do you call it? You can't adjust it to bring in the shoes. And that would normally be how you would get it off without really having to beat on it too much. It looks like. I'm just gonna have to pry it off just a little bit. These are those self-adjusting types. And there's no access on the back that I know of. So, not only am I overdue, actually, my pads aren't that bad. This side still looks okay, okay, well, it looks like the bottom side down here is starting to break off, and one of the holder springs is shot, definitely, probably the one that holds that one on, yeah. It's not really broken, but the... The keeper, I don't know what you call that, then that still is okay. It looks like it's rusted through on that side. Plus, the spring has no longer got much spring to it. I'll throw all this crap in the metal scrap pile. But you can tell my cylinder has been leaking for a while. There's oil all over the place inside here, which I think that's a brand new thing. I had these off just a couple months ago, just inspect them because they were starting to squeal. And you know, I see the pads were still pretty thick, and I'm like, well, we're not really ready. But I must have missed the broken parts on the bottom. That might have been what I was hearing for the squealing. Pieces get down in there and get caught in between and not attached to anything. That would definitely do it. So next I'm going to spray it down and clean it because I don't want this junk all over my hands all the time. Okay, obviously I don't want all this crap all over my concrete. There's a catch pan. And I'm going to start soaking it down with purple power. And I also got a deal on some CarQuest Brake Clean, two for five. I bought four. So that one's about empty. be thinking it's a waste of time to clean these parts before taking them off but the less crap I get on my hands the better in fact I'm gonna go put some gloves on them they're already mighty dirty but this stuff is insanely dirty I don't, I'd like to stay as clean as possible okay there's about three springs I'd like to take off first obviously we got our keeper springs 
on each shoe when one of them fell off. And then there's a spring right down here. I don't know if you can quite see that. Holds the two shoes together at the bottom. It's kind of underneath of this piece right here. That'll give us decent access. Um, parking brake is attached to this long lever here at the bottom. And then this spring I don't really worry about until until all the rest is gone. Um, you can actually bring both shoes up and off of it together with that spring intact as long as you have the other stuff undone. I'm actually going to raise this up so I have a little bit better access to the bottom. Okay, yeah, last time I was able to get pretty good access to this spring from the bottom and just use some needle nose pliers. There you go, that's what holds the bottom together. And the non, the front side, which would be the non-parking brake side, would have the adjuster lever on it. Which doesn't really matter. But this top spring is what's going to hold them together. Oh, and i got to get my keeper spring off here. It should be as easy as twisting and turning until it lines up. Hold the back. Get that off there. There, there you go. Yeah, I just made a huge mess, but that shows you when you rock that forward the main spring, which is still on this side, in there like that, all it really does is it just fits in there like that. So as soon as you rock it that way, it can actually come out. There's not really not much holding it on there, which is fine. It makes it easy to put together, take apart, etc. Um, I bought a new hardware kit, so I have a new uh, adjusting lever and spring. But that roll pin right there has to be put into the new shoes, which was also in my hardware kit. Make sure that's there. And that'll give you a good look at the pieces that were breaking off, causing my squealing brakes. Okay, the emergency brake. This can be taken off of the lever. However, you're just going to be putting it back on there. Um, especially if you don't have a hardware kit that comes with a new lever, which I'm not really sure why you would. And mine does not. So the thing to do is to take the keeper off the back side of this lever dowel and get it off of the shoe. And then you're just going to put it onto your new shoe. And I think um, mostly you're just going to have to hit on it with a hammer and maybe a chisel punch or something. Maybe you can find a way to spread it. That might help because uh, once it comes off there, it's going to be spread too far apart. When you put it on the new shoe, you're going to have to clamp it back together. At least that's what I had to do on the driver's side. So I'm going to try to hit on that and get it off there. Alright, so I was actually able to use some channel locks to squeeze against the ends of the keeper and the dowel. And then some just some needle nose. I was able to pull it off. There's that shoe. And I can just leave that part on there. And it is still very filthy dirty back in here. So I might spray it down again with the degreaser and the brake cleaner off camera. I guess it should be worth noting that normally your stuff would not be this oily, nasty, dirty. But since uh, since my cylinder let go, the seal's in it, 
a lot of brake fluid all up in there and that's why it's extra nasty. I was trying to clean up the uh, emergency brake lever a little bit and the dowel came off which might be worth mentioning that uh, not only the dowel but there is a spring washer that goes in between the dowel and the lever on the dowel head side and then the other side is obviously your little keeper kind of like a little horseshoe okay well that's better so it's time for the cylinder to come off so there is uh, two bolts on the back holding it onto the plate and of course you got your bleeder valve and the hole that the brake line threads into now the trick here is that this line is metal and it's probably corroded so you want to hit it with some penetrant something to release the threads I use PB blaster whatever and even then it probably still will need a trick to get it off without breaking it uh, the deal is that the, the nut will seize to the line they're supposed to move independently of each other, but they probably won't. Just because no lubricant was put on them when they were when they were assembled. No big deal. So the trick is to remove the bleeder valve and the two nuts, and then we're actually going to pull it forward from the plate, hold on to the nut of the brake line, and spin this part. Now this isn't necessary, obviously, if your nut breaks free from the line, but you know this truck is a 1995, so. And never been off before. It's, it's probably going to seize. The driver's side was seized. So, probably going to have to use that trick. Okay, there's a nice shot from the back. And the nut of the line, it's like a 916, fits that pretty well. You can see the line moving. Expected. I'll go ahead and see if I can take the bleeder off. Probably about a 10 mil or 3 8 somewhere in there. Not really expecting this one to come off. Yeah. It's stripped on that, so. Get a six sided socket on it, maybe. Yeah, look at that. It's like it's possible I've had this bleeder off before because I've got some thread tape on it. And I'll show you why here after a bit. Alright, so now I've got better access to that nut. And I'm going to wash that line. And I can see quite clearly that it is very much froze to the nut. So, I'll take these two bolts off for the cylinder, which also happen to be 10 mil or 3 8 I've got a 10 mil socket on there. I didn't have problems with these on either side. Fairly easy to get off. A little trick for you, too, if the bolt or nut is so loose that the ratchet moves it both ways get your finger on the socket. It'll probably provide just enough friction to keep it from moving both ways. You need to save these bolts. They're not part of the hardware package or the new cylinder or anything. Okay, now I did have 
have problems getting the driver's side cylinder to release from the back plate. It's just rusted in place. So actually had a pry bar on it. There we go. From the front side. And then you should be able to pull it forward like so. And get your 916 back on that nut and hold it. while you spin the cylinder. There. Terrible. One thing I'm going to do is get this line bent out of the way a little bit and cover it. And I'm going to clean the whole splash plate again. That cylinder came apart and there's brake fluid everywhere again. Alright, so I did a couple things off camera here besides clean the plate. I actually put just a small dollop of anises on the end of the nut on the brake line and I can actually see a little bit of gunk on the end of that brake line. I'll make sure I get that cleaned out and I also removed the bleeder valve from the new cylinder so that I can spin it in there without catching the line or anything it may, may or may not be a problem. I think it'll help. And also put some NSCs on the two nuts that hold the cylinder to the plate. Alright, so obviously you want to get the right hole. And it's the one with, that has a, what looks like an inverse fitting on the end, on the inside. Bending that line, to, line around does not help the situation get started, but keep working it. You'll get there. Get the wrench back on the nut so it doesn't turn. Hopefully it tightens up in roughly the right spot. So I got fairly lucky this time with the bleeder valve on top. Get these both started before you start tightening them down. Probably have to wrench the cylinder around a little bit. There we go, that wasn't so bad. I'll go ahead and tighten those down. There we go. Alright, now something else I did off camera was I put some thread tape on the bleeder valve. This is going to help me when I go to bleed the brakes by myself. I'm trying to prevent as any air moving in and out from the threads. I only want it to come out behind that cap. It's the middle of the day and then all my people are busy at work or whatever so I can't do this 
the typical two-man route. I'll go ahead and tighten this down. I plan to pump up the brakes, even with air in it. And uh, one of the things I want to watch after all this is done is I want to watch that line where it goes into that nut. Make sure it never starts leaking because we fatigued that metal quite a bit going back and forth trying to get the old cylinder out and the new cylinder in. Alright, so we're uh, getting ready to put all this stuff back together now. So what I want to do is clean up the three spots on each side that the brake shoes ride against. And I'm actually going to use a cordless drill and a wire brush to do that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Obviously, if you don't have a cordless drill and a wire br or a cut brush, then use what you got. And then I'm going to spread some anises on those areas. for hardware and shoes. Okay, so here's the shoes. Um, I actually got a kit off eBay with four shoes and two drums. They were supposedly premium. I forget the name of the seller, but they were they were emailing me right after I bought the kit to make damn sure that I was getting the right stuff. You know, they wanted to know year, model, four drive, two wheel drive, even lug nuts, stuff like that. You know, and I already checked it and the, the auction was, you know, specifically for my truck, but maybe it was just a general auction. Anyway, I did get the right stuff. The driver's side went together fine. All four shoes are exactly the same. They're just, uh, one, one side fits all kind of a thing. That's where our uh, roll pin comes in, where we need to push it in. Actually, it was this side, wasn't it? One of the sides. But as far as which side is which on the shoes, it does not matter. And I had ordered a full hardware kit on eBay and it showed up. One bag was completely empty <laughs> and it was just generally the wrong stuff. So I got online and Advanced Auto had um, three different part numbers for all the springs and a few of the levers and the adjuster, adjuster screw. And about the same price, it was about 30 30 35 bucks for all of it. So there's the adjuster screw and lever, spur, keeper, and there's the springs and such. There is new dowels in there, but I wanted to say that these dowels weren't the same size as the original. But looking at them, it looks like they are actually the same size. So I didn't end up using them on the driver's side, but it looks like you could actually use them if you wanted to not have to rebend that horseshoe back on there. It sounds like a pretty good idea. It looks like there's new Eclipse for it in the bag. So that's good. Looks like the new dowel was in with the adjuster screw kit. So just pick a shoe and punch it in. How far it's in doesn't really matter, about halfway. So whichever shoe you picked, put the dowel pin in, that's going to be the front side with the adjuster lever. And one thing I did do with the adjuster screw was put some anises on it. Okay, so I ran the nut all the way in. And you kind of have to imagine that adjuster lever is going to be on the front and it's going to be going down to adjust. So when it goes down, it wants to catch those spurs and then it's going to move the nut back that way to spread it out as the shoes wear you want, it, you want this to spread out so they engage faster next little bit is the this little clip and there's a little couple teeth on it right there that's going to catch in the grooves of this thing okay so that's how it's assembled there and it does this light on here. Okay, so now I want to get this emergency brake lever 
onto the back pad. And there is a nub on the back side of the lever. So that's going to be touching the front side of the brake shoe like that. So we know basically how it's going to go together. And I've got my new dowel and spring washer. Feed it up in there. And the spring washer is going to keep it from getting wherever you need it to get the E clip on, the new E clip. So just keep some pressure on it somehow and then slide them together. Okay, so that's together like that. Another good opportunity to put some anises on there to make sure they continue to slide easily. They're also going to touch at the bottom. A little anises on that too. Like that. This is going to go up in here. Like so. I'm a little unsure if this is the best time to put the keeper on there or not. So I'm just going to lay it there. Okay, on the front shoe, I'm going to take the big spring, the short end, goes in like that. And then this end is just going to come into the same slot at an angle like that. And then you're just going to lay it forward. Like so. Now, lift up the front shoe a little bit and we should be able to slide our adjuster into place. Make sure it gets into its notch. That looks good. And the adjuster lever and the spring. A little bit dirty here. And the adjuster lever. It's going to sit in there like that on that dowel rod. On the spring, the short hook closest to the spring will come in on the, the uh, back side like that. And the long end will come in through the back side to get that hole also. And just get the hole on the dowel and push it up so that the notch up here actually comes in behind the fork on the adjuster and then that should be good and then we're just down to the last few things here I'm going to try to get our shoe keeper springs on and then it comes in through the back side and the spring you see there's a large circle smart circle small circle that'll actually go in towards the shoe and then your cup will actually fit over the spring like that now there's a special tool for this and if you do a lot of brake jobs go get it you know but i i've had some luck with just using needle nose push it in turn it you know hold the hold the keeper nail from the back twist it if you need to i'm gonna do this off camera because i'm probably gonna slip a few times i had a lot back a lot better luck just using pliers and holding the disc pushing back and twisting to get that keeper on on the bottom side you want to make sure your shoes, there's a little piece down here that kind of holds them. You want to make sure the shoes are actually in that groove. And then of course the spring, there's a couple slots in the bottom for those. And you just want to spread that over. And then it also goes underneath that piece. 
and you're in. Now, the next, next thing I'm going to do is put some more anises on this. I'm going to put it on the face of the spindle. Just all the way around. One of the things I wish I would have done when it was new, but luckily uh, I was, I mean, uh, luckily my drums never froze to the face of this axle spindle here. There's definitely some corrosion there. So, if I had the truck another 150,000 miles or whatever this took for <laughs> the original shoes and drums and cylinder to wear out or break, I'll have a much easier time. But also, if I ever buy a new truck, this is one of the first things I'm going to do. That's if I have discs, or if I don't have discs in the rear, which I definitely would prefer. Okay, so my batteries died on my wireless microphone, and I didn't catch it. So these, these couple clips here are uh, without original audio. And honestly, I don't really remember what all I was saying other than obviously right here, you want to spray down the braking surface on the inside of the drum because those are usually shipped with some kind of anti-rust or anti-corrosion coating. And it's basically like grease, you know. And of course, you don't want grease on your your drums and your shoes or they'd just be completely ineffective. So you got to spray that stuff off. And um, when you go to put it on, you either want your adjusting screw in all the way, and maybe even possibly your cylinder needs to be pushed in, which might, might mean that you need to um, loosen the bleeder valve to get the air out of it and push your cylinder inward, maybe with your brake shoes or whatever. I'm having a hard time here because I, I'm going to adjust the uh, adjuster back in all the way for some reason I had it a few turns out and I think that's what made the difference here right there I am adjusting it but it may just be a position thing just grab hold of the shoes work them around until you can get your drum on there Okay, at this point I've got the adjuster in all the way and the drum's going to slide on just fine. And once it's on, basically I'm going to put lug nuts on it on opposite sides right there to keep it held in place. Okay, the big trick for one man bleeding is this hose. And at the far end we got that nut on there just for weight. There's a check valve right there. Little white thing. Basically it lets the oil go that way into the into the bottle but not come back out. So it's not sucking air. And on this end, we got this spring and hose that fit over the bleeder valve. So we crack it in just a little bit, put this over it, and then run the spring over it to make sure it doesn't pop off. And of course that uh, thread tape comes in so the air does also not come in through the threads or also brake fluid come out through the threads. Alright, so get the cap off. Make sure to save that. Get the end of that hose on there. And then Push that spring over the top of it as well. This is being super difficult. There we go. The other end came out. the other end is down the catch bottle and push on the brakes do that a few times until there's no more bubbles coming out we also want to be damn sure that we have fluid in the reservoir this will be your back brakes and this will be your front 
so when you pump you're losing fluid so keep it up so you don't suck air into the system Okay, this part gets a little crazy. What I'm gonna do is actually throw the truck in reverse. I'm in two-wheel drive, shouldn't move, because that's the only way you can adjust these brakes, is in reverse and hitting the brakes. And it should adjust itself like that. Well, hopefully the only thing left now is to put the wheel back on, torque the nuts down, put the cover back on, and take it for a drive. Call this job done. <laughs>